This video is brought to you by the following sponsors. Number one, read the line. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. That's not him. Okay. Number two. Read the line. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. Absolutely not. Okay. Number three. You will behold the glory of my sacred wood. That's him. Every year, one in five gamers is accosted by an elf. We're tired of elves. What's up, Lorehounds? It's Goopy here. I'm going to show off the newest edition of the World of Warcraft magazine. It's actually Volume 1, Issue 2, the Spring 2010. As you can see, it's very cataclysmic. we got Deathwing on the cover. Um, and it's also, obviously, the poster inside. This edition runs 143 pages and has a large assortment of articles compared to the previous one, thanks to, you know, Cataclysm being a topic they can talk about and stuff for this one. Um, it's also, the first thing you, I noticed was that this one's actually far more glossier than the original, which had the Lich King. Lich King. Um, it's the whole front instead of just the Lich King, which you see here is the glossy part. Not a big deal, but I noticed it off the cover. Um, as I said, it's got a wide assortment of articles from PvP to columns to another battleground tips to a bunch of features and more lore. So we're going to take a closer in-depth look at them. So the first article we're going to take an in-depth look at is the stories behind the stories. So basically this is the quest designers and they taught, it's, it's all the quest designers or all the big ones as far as we know. Um, from Alex Afrasiabi, sorry if I butchered your name, Alex, <laughs> um, all the way down to the newbies and people who've only been there since Wrath or right before Wrath of the Lich King. The interesting thing about this article that I found was these guys do a lot more than write the story. In fact, that's that's very little what they do now. Um, generally, the they only spend a few percent writing. I think they said five or ten in the article, and most of the other stuff since. Blizzard has changed the direction of the quest design is actually telling a story through in-game events, either through the, the words that the NPCs speak or the actions and stuff like that. So they do very little writing now and it's more direction. And one of the other things we learned was that they take the, the cues for how to make quests from the zones themselves. So, you know, what would be interesting to do in Terracar Forest or things along those lines. It's not so much that they just pick a various few things and then go with it. They're actually designing the quest for the zone itself and then getting them to do the, the breadcrumbs, as they call them, to bring you to the next iteration of where you should go from there. Um, it it's actually really surprised me what they do. You know, I said that they do very little writing, but they do stuff from beginning to the end, including, you know, populating mobs even in the areas, not just a quest, but also the whole quest hub and the guys you have to go out and kill. So it's it's far more than I originally thought. Um, the next one we're going to go to is a personal favorite of mine because it's very nostalgic, which I love and you guys probably know I do. So we see here Baron Geddon, the guy who can destroy entire raids in a single bomb of fire or if you can get yourself to iron forge quick enough kill the whole town so really what what this one is it's just about a nostalgic look back at molten core for level 80s so what we can do as level 80 players to get some enjoyment out of this old content um, obviously for the people who have who have done it a thousand times it's just nostalgia but it also gives you tips on how to beat certain bosses and stuff from from all the old original vanilla raids um, it focuses on specific ones for Blackwing Lair, AQ, and even Z ZG. Uh, here we see Varen Geddon just because of his bomb mechanic is really fun. And there's Razor Gore, who everyone probably remembers spending hours and hours learning how to kite around, especially you hunters, um, how to kite around the room and then before we actually start killing the boss. So he, he was the big guy that a lot of people couldn't get past in, in Vanilla WoW for Blackwing Lair um, before even the gear check that was Veilstraws. Um, we move on, we see the Buru the Gor Gorger from AQ-20. I don't see many people actually having a problem with him. AQ-20 was pretty puggable, uh, on my server at least back in the day. Um, Project Scarum, I 
could be butchering, butchering his name as well. I don't say his name much because he wasn't that difficult either, but he was a lot of fun. And then we see a little note here. Unfortunately, Hikaru only gets a footnote in, in this nostalgic look back. And I guess it's because we can farm him so easily. Um, he's he's solvable by many classes, and uh, otherwise he can be done with just a couple of people. Whereas some of these other bosses are definitely not solvable, no matter what. Another lore piece that, that's really, really important is the dragons. Um, obviously, we all know that the dragons have played a huge impact on not only World of Warcraft, but even Warcraft proper, their real-time strategy games. And that's kind of where we first learned about them. So they do a really interesting, the second feature they do is on dragons and a full retrospective. Uh, Pixie 60 actually covered this earlier, earlier this week and she did a great job. And, and here, since we have the, they have the essence of having all these pages, they get to do some fancy layouts and of course they have all this exclusive art. Uh, so they start off by just giving us a lexicon, the basic information on dragons and, and just how you would talk about them and stuff, which is, you know, if you've read, read one of Richard Nax books, he, uh, he uses almost all these words, especially Leviathan. He seems to love that one, which elusively is not in the lexicon. Um, he says it enough, so I guess it's just considered standard knowledge at this point. So, you know, they cover all the different types of dragons and all the different subsets of dragons and subgenres. So from whelps to proto-drakes to dragon kin to dr draconoids to dragon spawn, all the dragon star names. And then we get into actually the dragon flights where they start discussing uh, you know, who the big guys are, some lesser known ones that you may not have heard of, and then some of the ones we've killed or encountered, and, and you know, Alex Straza here we've run into in, in Weimar's Temple, and then we also killed Vale Straz, who is uh, one of the children of Alex Straza, who was possessed, and that's why we kill him. That's a favorite uh, excuse for, a favorite excuse for World of Warcraft lore is, you know, people are possessed, and that's why I have to go kill him. Anyway, so one of the things, you know, we have these fancy charts. Here we have Maligos and the Blue Dragon Flight. We have these fancy charts and stuff. But what I, what I missed from here is they don't go, first of all, too much in the depth in these guys. Obviously, some of these, these dragons are huge players, not just, you know, spawns of Maligos and stuff, but Collect Ghost is in all, the, uh, all of Nax novels. We know a lot about them. Uh, Tiragosa is in them as well. And, you know, we have... Uh, where is, yeah, Coral Straz, obviously, he, he's huge in the novels as well. And also, he gives a quest line in, in Wormer's Temple. So we have all this information, you know, we have, we know all this information on him, but supposedly in this ultimate guide to dragons, they just list these guys. And it's, they're not just giving them, they're just desserts of explaining all the details. Not even, you know, who's dead, who's alive, where can we encounter him. I just feel that they, they miss the, the point of trying to integrate the, the dragons with some of the knowledge and stuff that w we would know. And, you know, especially the older stuff, like green dragons that we saw way back in Vanilla WoW that we may have forgotten about during our grind for nature resist gear and stuff like that was overlooked. Louis Villazon, sorry again if I butcher your name, uh, wrote this article, Kill and Cure, which is a quick guide to how to not only do, to, uh, do your basic healing, which is what your assignment would be, but also get a little more out of it. So your healing and dispelling is what you're assigned to, but you know, getting a little extra DPS, helping the group along a little more, especially when you're in a one that's lacking the, lacking the DPS, but the healing's fine. Or in the reverse, where you have a tank that doesn't need you to heal, or you're in Violet Hold where you don't need to heal, period. Um, so, you know, it, it's a really fun article where, he, where we're just told, you know, his vision, why he does this, how he goes about adding that extra DPS, and why it may be worth it, um, even though you're only going to add, if you're lucky, the, ta the, the equivalent of the tank's DPS. And before we go, they gave us this great teaser for the next issue. So I, I think we all know who that is.